Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to be showing you how to solo all of the gathering aspects in the Avalonian Roads. So there are four different types of aspects for each resource in the Roads. You have the two small ones, so the ones with one sword over their head are very easy. Anyone can sort of solo these, even with gathering gear, they're pretty easy. And then there's the ones with two swords, which are the main ones we're going to be focusing on as they're a little bit harder and you generally need a specific build to kill them. And then there's the very large aspects, like they look like the world bosses which you can solo some of them if they're the one sword version or if they're the two sword version i don't think you'll be able to solo any of them really even with the one sword versions are very very difficult and you're going to need very very high ip okay so the first thing that we're going to cover is the build that you're going to be using it's a very similar build to the dagger build from my last video in the meta showcase only changing the cape from a limhurst to a damage cape and the potions from energy to poison potions now, as I was killing all the aspects gathering clips for this video, I did it all with a Limhurst cape because I forgot that I didn't need the mana, so you should find them a little bit easier than I did in this video. Second, there's two swaps for this build. Essentially, if you're going to do the large aspects, then you're going to need two aspects of your build to have energy regeneration, so you can either go Limhurst cape, Eye of Secrets, or Scholar Sandals as swaps. There's also one swap for each of the skin aspects, which I cover during those sections of the video. Okay, let's move on to how you actually use this build to solo all of the aspects. Starting with wood, this aspect is pretty tanky, but it's not actually too difficult. The clip on screen here is a tier five boss, and I'm using tier seven gear, but I didn't even pop my food or use a poison on it. Essentially, you wanna use your first E pretty early after hit two around once. And then it's going to start this channel. Essentially, you just want to walk around and make sure you never get hit by any of the circles. They do a lot of damage over time, so getting hit by one is generally just reset and then go back again. After he finishes the channel and the last circle pops up, you can go ahead and use your assassin hood. Make sure you're a decent distance away from him so he doesn't do too much damage while using your assassin hood. And then use your second E on him. After you finish the second E, you want to sprint away immediately and try kiting him around for a while. Essentially, you're just buying time for him to use his next ability where he won't be able to damage you effectively if you just walk around. If he does catch up to you and auto you and you're a little bit low, feel free to iframe it with a shadow edge and just go through him. By the time he finishes his second channel, you should be able to finish him off with your next E combo. If you don't finish him off, you have your assassin head back up again, so you can go ahead and use that and then finish him off with the next E. Moving on, second we have the ore aspects. These I can't really figure out if their ability does damage or not. I feel like getting hit by it sometimes does damage and sometimes doesn't in it, so you're better off dodging it. But really, this is a super easy one. Probably the easiest of all of the aspects, especially if you have deadly swipe, you can just very easily dodge their ability and then out heal or damage their damage. If you're a little bit lower IP than I was in this video, or you're doing a higher tier one, you probably want to kite it around a little bit more, so only really engage it when you have your E up, otherwise be sprinting or just kiting it around for a while, and then shadow edging through it when it auto attacks you when it catches up to you, so you can reduce the damage that you take while you're kiting around. Next we have the skin aspects in the roads, and these are by far the hardest. They buffed these to insane proportions. They are way too difficult, so we're actually going to have to cheese this to have any chance of even killing it, and we have to change up our abilities and passives slightly. So I didn't bring any beef stews with me, but I'm pretty sure beef stews are the way to go with this. Essentially, you have to kill this in two E's. So it's a, it's a big IP check. Use damage on all of your passives, Sunder on your Q, or use Chain Slash on the W. It's a lot less forgiving, but you definitely need the damage over the Shadow Edge. And then we're also going to use Dodge Roll to cheese it a little bit. So essentially, you want to engage it and get three Q stacks on it as fast as possible, and then instantly E it. During your first E, it's going to use its first skull on you. Make sure you iframe that with Chain Slash. As soon as your first E ends, you want to use Meditation, get your E back up as fast as possible. However, it's still going to be on a little bit of a short cooldown, so what you're going to do, it's going to use its second skull on you. You're going to dodge roll into your mount, iframing the skull, and then mounting up in the same tick, using the invulnerability to get mounted. 
It's going to dismount you eventually, but this will buy time for your second E to come up, which you will then use. During this E again, it will have another skull, and you just have to iframe it again with Chain Slash. Make sure you also use your Poison Pot right after you get dismounted, right before you use your second E. If you don't kill it by that second E, that just means you need higher IP or more damage, and you will likely bleed out and die after you kill it anyways. Next we have the fiber aspect, this is the second most difficult, it's not nearly as difficult as the skin aspect but it does require some practice as its ability is a little bit of a pain in the ass. So for this aspect, essentially the same as the wood aspect, you want to use your E pretty early as soon as it hits you once, and then it's going to use an ability as your E is coming to an end. Make sure you dodge a little bit so you don't get hit by it, there's the little thorns that will summon and chase you along the ground, you want to sprint away and then use your assassin hood. After your assassin hood finishes, make sure you instantly turn back on it and use your second E. Make sure you sprinted it long enough away or else the thorns will catch up to you. Again, at the end of this E, it will use its second ability and some other thorns. Make sure you dodge this and then you want to kite the aspect around using your next sprint. This is where it gets difficult. Essentially, you have to find a good time to E it without being too close to the thorns that it summons and it will keep summoning these thorns once every 10 seconds or so. So try to find some space away from the thorns, lure the boss there, and then use your poison in your last E to finish it off. If the thorns are collapsing at you at the very end, you can also use Shadow Edge for a brief iframe to get another 2-3 hits before the thorns start damaging you. If you're struggling, you can also use a poison on the first E, because usually with an Assassin Hood channel or two Assassin Hood channels, you'll have your poison up again by the third E. Lastly, we have the stone aspect. For some reason, this boss has two abilities, meaning it's a little bit harder than the wood and the ore boss, but still very doable. I don't really have this one down to a science. I'm pretty sure it depends on the tier and your IP, but one ability is very similar to the skin aspect skull. It pops after a short duration. It does not do nearly as much damage as the skin aspects one, so you don't actually really have to iframe this one. A really good thing that you can do is iframe the ones that pop their damage at the same time as he hits his auto attacks. You can essentially iframe two abilities at once. For his second ability, he throws these cascading lines of rocks outwards. It's very easy to dodge, so you just go right inside of him and they won't hit you there. Really, my suggestion is to go in, use your first E, iframe some stuff, Assassin Hood right on top of him, use your second E, and then kite him around for a little bit. He shouldn't use his cascading rocks at that point, and even if he does, you can just go back inside of him and then use your third E and it should finish him off. Okay, I also wanted to briefly touch on the large aspects that are meant for very large groups. You can solo some of them, although you do need very high IP. So there's two variants of these. One are single sword versions, and then there's the double sword versions. You cannot solo any of the double sword versions, but the single sword versions are definitely soloable for some types. So in general, these are mostly just a stat check, having high enough IP. They're very easy to solo compared to the other aspects. Actually, their mechanics are much easier. However, they do have an enrage mechanic that seems to pop around like nine or 10 minutes into the fight, which makes them very, very impossible to kill. So essentially, even though your build can sustain through all of their damage, no problem. If you don't kill them fast enough, they're gonna get enraged and you're going to die. That being said, I'm going to show you their basic mechanics when you're soloing them. They have different ones when you're in a group, but soloing them, they're very basic, and so they can be quite easy to deal with. So for the wood aspect, I'm not honestly really sure what their ability does. It creates like a little root on the ground at the position you are at the start of the channel, but it doesn't seem to do any damage even when you stand within it, so I'm not really sure what the purpose of this ability is but it really doesn't seem to be problematic for a solo player. Honestly, it just gives you time to walk away or heal up or use your assassin hood, really just making it a very easy boss to solo. The only difficult thing about this boss is that it has a lot of health, so you do need a high IP and a lot of DPS to be able to kill it. For the ore aspect, its ability itself isn't problematic at all, but I'm not actually sure you're gonna be able to solo this one. The real problem with the ore one is that it's super fast. So its ability, it shoots this little line of rocks, however, if you stand inside of it, it doesn't hit you and doesn't do damage, you don't really have to worry about it. The problem is you can never really get your space against this boss, or at least I found I couldn't, because it was just too fast, it would run me down too fast, even when I used like a mount cheese, you can get mounted in between its attacks, it would literally run down my stag and dismount me before I could get my cooldowns back up. So for this one, I'm not entirely sure if you can solo it. Maybe there's some other method that I'm not thinking of, uh, but it's gonna be very difficult and you're gonna have to deal with its speed in some way. 
Moving on to the skin boss, this is the exact opposite of the smaller aspects. The skin boss is by far the easiest because you can abuse the skin or chest. Really any good solo build can do this. You don't even need the one handed dagger build. Just use the skin or chest and roast and it does so much damage and healing that you'll be able to solo it pretty easy. The clip here is me doing a dual sword one and you can see I'm almost out sustaining its damage. Its ability is really helpful for you because it stops attacking essentially when it doesn't have a debuff on it which you can see under its health bar it will shoot out these little poison things like the pestles that will fear you they're fairly easy to dodge just sidestep them and then you can tell how many it's going to do because once it's done its ability go back on cooldown and it will get that debuff again. Really the hardest part about the skin boss is making sure you can do it fast enough to kill it before it enrages. Next we have the large fiber aspect, and this one I'm pretty sure it is not soloable. Really, this thing has two major problems. Its ability is a stacking poison debuff, meaning if you don't have a guardian helm or some other way to cleanse it, I don't think it's gonna be possible. And second, it's really fast, so spacing it again is very hard, just like the ore boss. This clip here is of a dual sword one, but even a single sword one, its mechanics just seem like it would make it way too difficult to do solo. Last but not least, we have the large stone aspect, and this one is fairly simple to solo because he has two abilities that are fairly easy to deal with. His main ability is just super nice for you. He does this little charge up channel animation, and then he'll do this large AoE attack around him that constantly damages. However, he stands in place, so as soon as he does that animation, if you just run away a little bit, you won't take any damage, and you have all of that time to sort of use your assassin hood or your energy with scholar sandals or do whatever you really need to get your cooldowns back up. For this guy, you can even cheese him when he does that ability and mount up once you get far enough away and then come back in and let him dismount you to buy even more time. His second ability is just a simple kick. He will kick you out from in front of him and knock you back. So for this, I would suggest standing next to a wall or in a little divot so that you don't get knocked back or making sure that you save Shadow Edge or Chain Slash or something to just re it on him as soon as he kicks you away. Once you get used to him, you can also just iframe this ability if you want to with Chain Slash. Okay, so that is how you solo all of the aspects in the Roads of Avalon, or all the ones that you can solo. If I miss something, or you think there's a better way to solo one of these, make sure to let me know in the comments, maybe figure out a way to solo the large ore or the large fiber aspects. That would be great. Let me know, and if you like content like this, make sure to subscribe. Right.